This is the seventh in uh, a series of 12 introductory videos for teaching in a digital age. I'd like to thank the Commonwealth of Learning for making this project possible. Choosing media is one of the biggest challenges now for um, teachers uh, for a whole set of reasons. Um, and this is not an area where there's been a great deal of research and theory. So in a sense, this is one of the most original parts of my book. This video is uh, one of 12 and the aim of the vid 12 videos is to provide a very brief introduction to the main themes in each book. And I'm focusing in this video on choosing media, which uh, is covered in, in three chapters, seven, eight and nine. And in summary, this video covers the following main topics uh, in those chapters. The difference between media and technology, types of media, pedagogical differences between media. Uh, and then I offer two decision models in the book, the sections models and the SAMA model, and the importance and difficulties of media selection. So that's all covered in the book and I'm just gonna give a very brief summary of what that entails. I make a distinction between technology and media. Uh, I see technology as tools, hardware, software. You see on the right, a whole bunch of old Apple computer, computers. They're just technology. Until they're plugged in and somebody uses them, they're not actually a medium. Media are systems that carry messages. Um, and there's four core components of a medium. Somebody who creates that message, the message itself, a channel of communication, which is where the technology comes in, and a message interpreter. Somebody at the other end who gets the message and interprets it in some way, not necessarily correctly, but they actually interpret the message. So you need those four elements for a medium. And you'll see at the bottom, I've got a TV newscaster from Soweto in Africa. And a television uh, channel is a medium because it has creators, technology, messages, and people at the other end interpret interpreting it. And I make this distinction for a, a, a very important reason. Uh, we can classify media by the symbol systems that they use. Um, so in, 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 in so I, I list in the book a number of different media. So text, for instance, such as books, newspapers, and journals. Uh, graphics, such as the one on the right, tables, pictures, cartoons. Audio, such as radio programs or cassettes. Video, uh, movies, YouTube, documentaries, talking heads, demos. Uh, computing is a, is a medium um, uh, when it's used for communicate messages and so on, which it is most of the time, adaptive learning, artificial intelligence, animation, simulations, virtual reality and education, social media such as Twitter and Facebook, Instagram, and face-to-face -face teaching. Now this is interesting because it's not a technology but it is a medium. Um, so in the medium of face-to-face -face teaching is classroom teaching and in fact there is a technology there, it's the desks and the uh, whiteboards and uh, uh, the classrooms are, are the technology of face-to-face -face teaching. And I suggest that each of these different media have um, certain affordances or certain unique capabilities that they do better than other media. And again, this is an area that is very much under-researched. Um, I'll come to the reasons for that in a moment. Um, so again, I've had to kind of uh, brainstorm what the affordances of, of media are. And one of the problems with this is that it depends very much on the context in which the medium is used. So text may be more valuable perhaps in uh, philosophy, if you're teaching philosophy, than it might be in teaching science, for instance. Other media might be more valuable. So, but what text can do is how it can handle abstract ideas. Uh, I, I give a whole list of possible affordances of text, uh, academic affordances of text in, in the book. Uh, graphics can do things like visualizing, uh, the, this is visualizing a mathematical equation or formula. 
Um, audio can be used for language learning, but it also has some other uses in supporting uh, teaching. Uh, video is very useful for showing, for instance, dynamic change, um, for illustrating, uh, concre giving concrete examples of abstract ideas. In video, often the image is the concrete uh, uh, demonstration and the voiceover is often the, 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 the analysis, the, the, the abstract, the abstraction from the concrete ideas. Uh, computing has a number of affordances. Uh, it's very good for objective assessment, for instance. Um, social media can be used for collaboration, for instance. And face-to-face, -face, again, this probably more than any of the other technology depends on context. Uh, what are the unique, but this is the big challenge now when there are so many media around that a teacher can use we need to identify very carefully the special affordances of face-to-face -face teaching. Um, so as I said, this is a work in progress. We're still learning better about the pedagogical affordances of different media. And then I offer the, a model for making some choices on this. And you'll see there are eight parts to the model. I call it the sections model. It's an anagram for each of the eight uh, uh, steps. Um, so I suggest, first of all, you look at who your students are. Can the students access this technology? That to me is the most critical criterion for selection. It may be great to have virtual reality, but if students don't have the tools to use that, if they don't have good internet connections or they don't have access to virtual reality facilities, then it's not much point using that medium. The second is ease of use, both for instructors and for students. The third is the cost and time in doing something. Um, yes, it might be very nice to have a virtual reality demonstration, and yes, you might be able to get headsets to students, but the cost of developing it might be prohibitive. Then we come to the media characteristics. And again, there's been some research on that, and very little on the other elements, incidentally. Often academics only think about the teaching characteristics, but there are other important um, criteria for selection. Um, interaction, to what extent does the medium allow for interaction? There's a big difference between different medias in how much they enable interaction between instructor and student and between students. Uh, organizational issues, uh, do you have support for using the technology? Networking, um, does this technology allow you to widen networks and include uh, more people in the teaching um, and learning? And lastly, security and privacy. Uh, is the technology secure? Uh, does it protect students' privacy? Now, and again, I suggest in the book that this is not really a step-by-step -step analysis. It's more of an intuitive analysis. It's a, it's a set of questions to ask before you decide whether to use a particular technology. Um, and most people will start with the idea of using a technology and then maybe run, this, run that through this, this list of questions. And I also introduced Ruben Puentadura's uh, SAMA model in the book. Um, SAMA stands for substitution, augmentation, modification, and redefinition. He argues that more powerful uses of technology go towards the top, where you actually change what you're doing. The technology allows for the creation of new tasks previously inconceivable. And I can think of virtual reality as one where students can go in and manipulate uh, three-dimensional objects, see the consequences of that manipulation, and then form some intuitive understanding of what's going on. Um, that might be almost impossible to do through, say, having a lecture or a text about that topic. Um, and again, there's more details in the book. So I, there are some conclusions that I come to as a result of looking at the uh, ways of selecting media. There's very little research or theory, but it's very important. Uh, we have lots of choice today in what technologies we can use. And one of the big things that's happened over the last 20 years is um, the costs have dropped dramatically. At one time, cost was one of the key 
key criteria. But one can make a video now very cheaply uh, and very easily and to quite good standards just using a mobile phone, for instance, whereas previously you would need a big public, uh, a very expensive uh, television studio. So one of the things that comes out from the analysis is you have to be very clear about your desired learning outcomes in order to make a good decision about the technology and especially what kind of skills you're going to develop and how the technology can support the development of those skills. Um, I think it's increasingly important to focus on the affordances of each medium, what it does best, but there's a lot of research says there's no difference in technologies. It doesn't matter whether you use uh, a television, a televised lecture or a live lecture. But then you go back to uh, Puente Dura's SAMA model, uh, are you actually doing something different with the technology um, or are you just reproducing what you did before? And the argument is that uh, we should be using technologies for what can be done differently, which you wouldn't have done if the technology wasn't available. Um, the research is very clear on one thing, multimedia are better than single media. Uh, in this presentation, for instance, I'm using three media. I'm using text, PowerPoint slides, audio, uh, my voiceover, and images and graphics. Um, each medium reinforces the other, and students learn better when there's some redundancy in media um, because they learn, understand things in different, about the same topic in different ways. And lastly, and very importantly, learners can now create their own media very easily and this is a great way for students to demonstrate their knowledge in richer ways it means they can uh, go out and collect data for instance make a video and bring it back and add it to their portfolio of work and that's talked about in other parts of the book so overall i think this is an incredibly important topic which hasn't been given enough attention generally in educational theory. For more information on the book, uh, go to this link here and my next video will be on assessment and credentialing.